role that education workers play supporting kids in our schools. The common thread of all, in all of them is that, despite the best efforts of this government to starve our education system of resources, the quality of kids' education is being protected because of the hard work of education workers and their teachers. At the end of the day, it's our kids who are going to pay the price if this Premier and his minister don't get back to the bargaining table. Will the government commit to scrapping Bill 28 and bargaining in good faith today? And to reply, the Premier. Mr. Speaker, that's exactly why we want to keep them in class. We'll do whatever it takes to keep students in class where they belong. We want parents to know that we're doing everything we can to make sure the child, their child, doesn't miss a single day of class. We're at the table with a fair and reasonable offer. Matter of fact, a very fair, the best in the country. And yet the union refuses to withdraw the strike notice. Mr. Speaker, we don't want to be here. Neither, no one wants to be here and have to do this. We've heard, we've heard from countless parents, Order. endless parents. Matter of fact, there's never been an issue in four and a half years that I've had more emails about saying, make sure my kids stay in the class every single day. <laughs> and we, we know how difficult the pandemic has been on our children. But we Response. need QP to withdraw the strike threat, and I'm not going to tolerate, Mr. Speaker, students being out of the classroom for even one day. The NDP and the Liberals either. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the supplementary question, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you for the applause and thank you, Speaker. Uh, to, to the Premier, my question is for you. Jenny, a local parent, told my office, and I'm going to share her story. I am one of those parents whose child relies so absolutely on those incredible education workers. They have to be toileted. My child needs to be supervised during meals to prevent choking, to walk safely down the stairs and up the stairs. Educa medication has to be administered, and yes, the child still has to learn. Speaker, this government gave 88 percent of their PC MPPs a $16,000, $600 raise last June. This June, Speaker, Speaker, will the Premier, by Order. question to the Premier, will this government be willing to actually give education workers a raise that they deserve and match it to inflation? And to reply, the Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear. We will always support our frontline workers, plain and simple. And I'll, I'll tell you, Mr. Sure. Speaker. The fact is, QP continues to threaten to shut down the classrooms. They refuse to back down from a strike. Our offer maintains the most generous, I'm going to repeat that, the most generous pension and benefit plan in the entire country, including 131 paid sick days, unheard of anywhere. We're seeing school boards confirm Order. what will close, the, the doors will be closed if QP goes on strike. And I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, we won't let that Order. happen. Nothing Opposition matters more order. right now than ensuring the students remain in the classroom. We're investing over $26.6 billion Spons. in public education, the single largest investment order. in Ontario history, Mr. Speaker. Education funding for this Thank you. Thank you. The official opposition will come to order. The next the supplementary question, member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Talking points are cheap, Premier, and when it comes to education workers, they can't eat. That's why they're at the food banks. That's why they're holding down second jobs. I'm going to share another story with you, Premier, and through the Speaker. Carrie, another teacher, tells my office, one of our ECAEs held a little girl in her lap until her grandpa had to come because she was throwing up in a garbage can. The ECE refused to leave this little girl because she was scared and nervous. Carrie then tells me, I watched our other ECE march down to the kinders to the library because they had to evacuate the classroom while their education assistant was controlling a friend who was having a moment or episode. All these little ones had adorable, beautiful smiles on their faces as they passed the teacher's window and gave her a wave. 
They didn't even know that anything was wrong in their classroom, despite the fact that there was. A caretaker take, then marched down the hallway with a bucket in hand to then clean up the mess on the floor because four students got sick that same day. All of that happened within a 24-hour period, Question. all within an hour. Speaker, will this government show the fraction of emotional intelligence that we see from education workers that they exercise every single day and return to the bargaining table and give them a fair deal? That's right. Premier? Mr. Speaker, how about the students? How about the em mental, emotional, and even physical well being of two million students and therefore the <laughs> Member for Davenport will come to order. The member for Toronto St. Paul's will come to order. The member for Ottawa Centre will come to order. The Premier has the floor. Mr. Speaker, parents and kids have had enough. We've heard it. I've never seen anything like it. There is only one party in this legislature that is standing up for the students and the parents, and that's the PC party. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the opposition can have it both ways. Either they support shutting down schools or they stand with this government and will support keeping kids in classroom. It's either strikes or students, Response. and we're with the students. Thank you. The next question. The Leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, again to the Premier. The government's use of the notwithstanding clause to ban workers from collective bargaining is wrong. It's something the Prime Minister and I seem to agree on, and I don't agree with him on almost anything. <laughs> Here's what the Prime Minister had to say. You're a good buddy. You're a good buddy. The Order. suspension of people's rights is something you should only do in the most exceptional circumstances. And I really hope that all politicians call out the overuse of the notwithstanding clause to suspend people's rights and freedoms. The Premier Order. is fond of standing shoulder to shoulder with the Prime Minister. I've seen the photos. So, will the Premier change tack today, join the Prime Minister, his good friend, and condemn the use of the notwithstanding clause? To reply, the Minister of Education. Let me remind the member opposite that children in this province should have rights too, and they should be in school. In this Mr. Speaker, we have been clear. I can't hear the minister. Minister of Education has the floor. Order. Speaker, we have been clear. We believe children should be in school. They have been through two incredibly difficult years. They have been through the most difficulty in modern history. We have an obligation to ensure stability. We asked the union to bring forth a proposal that withdraws a strike on Friday. We gave them multiple opportunities to do so. And yesterday night at 10 p.m., hearing from order. the mediator and through Member the media, for Davenport we're going to order. proceed with a strike that no one wants and no one should accept. Mr. Speaker, Member Mr. For Sudbury, Speaker come to order. the Premier made it clear we shouldn't be here. There is, we obviously would prefer a negotiated settlement, but so long as a strike is on the table, the government will move forward with legislation that protects stability.